um, we're going to be doing a short demonstration on how to take bloods or do venipuncture for the patient. I would like to start off by introducing you to some of the equipment that we will be working with today. Um, so starting on this end, I've got my blood bottles. I'll bring one up just so that you can see that. And then we've got our disposable tourniquets. I've got a combination of two tourniquets because these are common tourniquets used within CLCH. Um, and I will show you on how to use both um, these tourniquets. Next, we've got an assortment of skin preparation as well as medical device equipment. You may have seen these at some point within your clinical or treatment room. So if I can highlight first and foremost, these two would be licensed for skin use. Um, they contain 2% chlorhexidine and 70% uh, alcohol. But these are licensed for skin use only. These two contain 2% chlorhexidine and 70% alcohol, licensed for medical device use only. This one we can add as a bonus for clinical surfaces as well. You will also need a community dressing pack. Obviously, your blood safety collection set, typically known as the butterfly. And your needle and vacutainer set, commonly referred to, or according to this one, it's called the quick shield. A pair of gloves. I also have a pair of gloves within my community set, and that sort of will support the ANTT practice that we will be um, working through today as part of the process for venipuncture. You will also need some alcohol gel, and this is to sanitize your hands. I've already washed my hands with soap and water, but in the interim, I will be using the alcohol gel. If you cannot get access to running water, and I've got the red top sunny cloth to decontaminate my equipment if you're thinking more of a clinic setting or an inpatient bedded area setting. A tray would be more appropriate for an inpatient bedded setting um, if the community dressing pack is not what you need for your setting. And last but not least, a sharp spin. First things first is you will risk assess. So maybe the key aspect I will always highlight is make sure you can actually access a vein for a patient prior to equipment preparation. Because you could go prepare all your equipment and then discover actually um, you don't have a vein that you can access. And that would just mean that all the equipment that you would have prepared goes to waste because you cannot use that at that point in time. So first and foremost, I will decontaminate my hands. Again, palm to palm, interlocking the fingers. And I'm sure you're all familiar with good hand washing technique. Sort of taking into consideration the risks, bare below the elbows, in the fingers, in the fingers, in the fingers, in the fingers. Um, but we've already covered all of those bits. The nails, making sure you've got that until your hands are nice and dry. The killing action of the bacteria happens when your hands are dry. So don't leave them wet. Right, I'm now gonna put on some gloves as I'm going to come into contact with the patient's skin. Now, some people might advise you that it is better to feel for a vein with skin only. And if that is you, then make that easier. But obviously in COVID times, some people may feel more comfortable if you actually put your gloves on. So I'm gonna have a little bit of a feel for the different veins I can access. Assessing the arm, I'm using a rubber arm, but the key aspects of assessing the patient is with vena puncture, the focus tends to be the antecubical fossa. And you're looking at the different veins you're able to access within the antecubical fossa so that you can make a selection as to the vein that is most appropriate for you. Now, I like to have a good feel so that I get a good sense of where I'm going. You want to select a nice straight piece of vein because obviously you don't want to aim for a bifurcation. What is a bifurcation, you might ask, where two veins split? Basically, you tend to get valves before a bifurcation, so always avoid a bifurcation because that provides resistance into uh, when you're inserting your needle. So I'm opting for this vein at this point in time. I'm happy with that. Uh, I'm now going to clean that vein. Right. 
one snap a gentle dab to activate the liquid and I'm doing a cross hash hatch or hashtag action in terms of cleaning so it's up and down and then across up and down and then across for approximately 30 seconds this is so that you get the chloroprep to penetrate that initial layer of skin and actually begin to um, deal with any bacteria that lies on the skin surface. Then leave to dry for 10, um, 20 to 30 seconds. Right, I've cleaned my skin. I can now go about the process of actually preparing my equipment um, for the actual vena puncture. If you're in a community setting, as I've highlighted, you will open up a patient pack. And again, for this, we're using standard ANTT. Select my gloves out. Just separate my gauze. Get the patient drape ready. Place that under patient's arm okay okay um so i've cleaned and decontaminated the patient's skin um however before i get any equipment ready i'm going to sort of apply alcohol to my hands again two tawny case quick shield device selection of bottles right I'm now going to put my gloves on Okay, excellent. So first things first is I'm going to demonstrate on how you'd apply the pink tourniquet. Usually the pink tourniquet has what looks like a green button. Hopefully that's visible to you. It's got both the flat side and the slightly knobby side on the inside. And an easy way to think about this in terms of application is that the flat side needs to connect with the skin so it's with the skin so flat to skin some people would suggest that you should be able to fit in two fingers however i believe two fingers could be subjective some people have small fingers other people have larger fingers a better way to check whether that tourniquet is on too tight is to be able to feel for the brachial artery once that has been put on and i know my patient is still alive so that is good i've got a nice strong pulse there Right, I've put on my tourniquet. The next thing I'm gonna think about is grabbing my device. I'll start off with the blood safety collection set. 
lovely short little needle and for most patients this is probably one of the most acceptable devices available for collecting bloods as it is a butterfly and the needle is quite short so for someone who's needle phobic this um, would be a preferable um, needle to use now how people hold this needle is different some people like to um, hold the wings because that gives them better grip and control other people prefer to hold it sort of like a pen um, and probably that's because that's a more familiar grip for them in this case I am going to hold the wings because I believe that makes it more stable and I will secure the vacutainer in my baby finger now you don't need to do that but I feel like it saves me from chasing um, the vacutainer with my bottles when I'm ready right as I've said earlier I've already cleaned the skin now I'm just going to give myself a little bit of traction to anchor my vein and introduce my needle whilst observing for flashback and I've got my flashback in the needle once you have the flashback you know that you've accessed the vein you do not need to advance your needle any further now order of draw if we were collecting a clotting sample first is to start off with a clotting bottle um, I always say obviously because there's dead space in the line of the butterfly it's quite useful to get rid of the dead space so that it doesn't displace my volume when it comes to actually filling up that clotting bottle and I get the exact amount I need for pathology to analyze so I use my initial bottle to prime the line that's just to get the bot, um, blood um, so that it's at the point of access and then my second bottle is actually my collection bottle and I will fill that to the recommended amount. I usually position the bottle downwards so that gravity works with me on this one. Once the bottle is sufficiently filled, I'm going to remove that and do my inversions. According to the order of draw, this is for four inversions and that brings me to number four. Right, the next um, tube that I will be drawing up for today will be for our user knees my yellow bottle for that collecting my sample again I'm aiming to fill this to the recommended level however for this bottle it's about 3.5 mils which is acceptable mm -hmm. and I now have that in my bottle I'm going to do my inversions five for the gold bottle so that brings me to four cool. yeah my last bottle in the order of draw for this is the group and save collecting the sample getting that to fill up and that recommended limit for this one is about four mils i'm trying to make sure i get to about four mils for the bottle right i've got enough sufficient for that i'm going to do my inversions 10 for this one and seven and eight and nine and ten inversions Popping that down, now I'm ready to take my needle out. I'm going to lay my gauze lightly on top. That's just so that if my patient is needle phobic, they don't get to sort of have a full visual of the needle. Maybe the thing to highlight, notice at no point did my hand leave the needle dangling in the air. And maybe my rationale for doing that is so that the patient doesn't assume I'm finished and they move their hand and then I die for it and that's likely to cause myself a needle stick injury. Whilst I'm still holding on to one wing, I'm going to activate the safety. Can you see that bit? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to squeeze the sides of my blood safety collection um, device, withdraw and retract and heal. I hear that click. That tells me my safety device or my sharps device is safely sheathed and then I will dispose of this um, in my yellow apply pressure for two to five minutes and if my patient was still bleeding I'd apply some elastoplast as long as they were not allergic to elastoplast that brings us to the end of this session okay. once again I'm going to demonstrate a um, vena puncture collection however in this particular scenario I'm demonstrating collection from the hand as we've got some localized infection in the antecubicle fossa which is making it difficult for us to access and our patient potentially has fluids going through the other hand 
Um, so I'm going to head for the hand because um, that's the best place to collect the blood for this patient in this situation. I'm also going to be demonstrating the technique that you would roughly use within an inpatient bedded area. Once again, I'm going to decontaminate my hand. I'm waiting for that to dry. Right. Okay. First things first, we'll pop our gloves on. Uh, second thing, second, we're going to decontaminate or investigate, risk assess so that we see that we've got an accessible vein. So I've got a lovely accessible cephalic vein here, lands parallel with your thumb. And I'm just going to give that a quick clean. This time I'm using the alcohol wipe. Same technique as though I was using the chloroprep applicator. The position will be up and down for approximately a region of five to ten centimeters and then across just to really just get into the grooves of the skin and decontaminate that region and we're going to be doing this appropriately for 30 seconds side Dispose of rubbish in the bin. Open up our equipment. Two blood bottles ready. Some gauze ready for that. Now I'm going to apply my tourniquet. Aiming again for a approximately two to um, two to five centimeters above the point of insertion for my needle. Now with the blue tourniquet, there's a slight technique to this one. Um, once again, I talk about um, having a long side overlapping a short side and making the letter X. Okay, you should still be able to fit two fingers underneath. However, like I said earlier, that's a little bit more subjective as long as you can still feel for a pulse that will tell you that you haven't obliterated your patient's circulation and then I'm going to create a loop with the long end and tighten using the short end. That ensures that my tourniquet is on tight enough. However, my tails are facing away from the area that I will be working on and I just have the light loop coming downwards. This means that it's not contaminating the region that I'm going to be working with on the patient. My tourniquet is now applied. Now we're ready to proceed with our blood collection. Once again, I like for the eye of the needle to be facing upwards. That means the cap is not to the side or underneath as that will exclude my access to the vein. So I make sure that it's facing towards me, the eye of the needle, and the cap is directly above that. Right, again, I'm going to give myself a little bit of traction here into the vein until I get my flashback. Now I have my flashback. Okay, flashback is got keeping my wrist very steady. I will start off by introducing my chemistry bottle. Collecting my sample. Sufficiently enough blood, taking that out and doing my inversions, and five for this one. Then collecting, um, removing my tourniquet, as my tourniquet only needs to be on until I fill up my first bottle. So releasing my tourniquet, going on the long side again, slipping it gently and releasing it, and then collecting my second sample, which is the group and save. Filling that up nicely, doing my inversions up to 10 and 7 and 8 and 9 and 10. That's done. Placing the gauze, 
lightly on top gently removing the needle and applying pressure turning my sharps device and activating the safety and disposing of that in the bin applying a little pressure um, inquiring of my patient whether they have allergies to elastoplast or plaster if the answer is yes then i might opt for a different dressing however if the answer is no i'm just making sure that they're not bleeding and i'm applying the elastoplast after that i can then label my bottles confirming the patient details at the bedside and send them off to pathology that brings us to the end of that session